holiday. <laughs> um, and I am happy to be back at Southpaws. And uh, today I'm doing a really interesting case, which is this Afghan hound who has this lipoma. And the lipoma is completely filling the deep pectoral muscle on that side. So the plan is that we're going to excise the previous surgical scar, and then we're going to remove the whole belly of the biceps muscle. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. Yes. And it's very exciting to be back um, doing a live stream. It is one of my favorite parts of my day. Yes. Yes. Um, and so hopefully we'll have lots more to come. Now, interestingly, in Melbourne, tomorrow is a public holiday for a horse race. And it's probably the, one of the only places in the world that take a public holiday for a horse race. Um, and so I won't be operating tomorrow, but on Wednesday I'll be operating again. All right, so I've ex or kind of isolating the previous surgical scar because that's contaminated. You guys that are watching, if you could let us know where you're watching from. So infiltrative lipoma that's isolated to just one muscle belly. Uh, can we get ligature, please? bunch of emails while I was away, people wondering if I had retired, if I hadn't streamed in two months when I was on holiday. No such luck, I'm back. Emily, can you lift up on that for me, please? So we've got Romania, Taiwan, Miami. with this skin, not to devitalize it with my cautery. For an intramuscular lipoma, it's very soft and fluctuant but it's definitely full of fat based on our CT scan. Can I get some more towel clamps, please? I think we're getting into latissimus dorsi. Not give you a What uh, for towel clamps? Yeah, that's fine. Yep, thank you. So it's not not like a mass cell tumor or something where we have to get a huge surgical margin, but we certainly want to stay outside of that muscle fascia. Can I get a, can I get the big gelpies there, please? Mexico, um, 
So, good question. Somebody just asked if this was a recurrent tumor or if it was, you know, what the reason was for the previous surgery. So, um, somebody did operate on this a, about a week ago, a little bit more, over a week ago, and felt that it was um, getting into area, you know, an anatomic area that he wasn't comfortable with. So, um, that's really good that he stopped when he did. Um, Sorry that we're having to use these towel clamps. So it's not a recurrent tumor, it's just a, uh, like an exploratory surgery that was done previously and the vet felt like it was beyond his capability. So many new staff here since I left. A bunch of people asking, who's that old man that's wandering around here? That was Camille. Camille reminded me today of how long we've been working together, which is crazy. Am I allowed to say, Camille? Yeah, yeah. Camille and I have been working together for 16 years. It's been a yeah, crazy ride, hasn't it? Certainly never a dull moment. I come in with some other crazy idea. And I really believe in having as close to a bloodless surgical field as we can, because your visualization is going to be so much better. So it's worth taking the time. Also, a lot easier if you've got electric cautery. So that's, I think, getting into latissimus up in there. And that's the division between latissimus and deep pectoral right there. Can I get a, an Army-Navy retractor, please? It's really important here to take your time and stay completely out of that muscle ca capsule. Uh, we'll start with one. So that's triceps muscle right here, yeah, right? So that's probably long head of the triceps. Getting into latissimus dorsi and then 
the deep pectoral muscle heading up there. I'm sorry you guys can't see it from the position of the camera and the position of Junior's head. <laughs> can you pull back? You can. Uh, yeah, that's great. I'll we'll just jam that back up in there. Um, What I want to do eventually is to get around the front of this thing and isolate the rosh or the cranialmost portion of the deep pectoral muscle. Think about this for a second. Let's get that underneath here. So that's that's definitely the cranial portion of the deep pectoral muscle there. This may be all the tismus dorsi right here. So that's kind of peeling off there. I just attended the American College of Vet Surgeons conference in Portland, Oregon, and I saw a lecture that really scared me about antibiotic stewardship and how quickly we get resistance and how we need to decrease the amount of antibiotic, or, you know, or the number of, the, the, I guess the amount of antibiotic use that we use in veterinary medicine. And like, you know, I had a case come in today that had an incision about a centimeter long between the digits and it was put on a week of antibiotics prophylactically. And we really just cannot do that anymore. Um, and in some countries, particularly in Northern Europe, they have restricted the privilege of antibiotic use from veterinarians because of inappropriate um, uh, antibiotic regimens and fear of resistance. And so if we're not careful, that's going to happen to us and other countries as well. I mean, they were saying, for example, that in routine surgeries that don't have implants, you shouldn't be using any antibiotics at all prophylactically. Um, we, you know, we give a single dose of IV or every 90 minutes in pretty much all of our cases, and that's, that's probably inappropriate. So there is a consensus statement in the journal Veterinary Internal Medicine um, that discusses what appropriate antibiotic use is. And I've downloaded it. I'm going to review it. But after seeing that lecture, I'm actually really frightened about what the future holds. And we're going to have to really change our practices. All right, so now we've got this muscle belly here. I can apologize if you can't see it, but I can't tell if that's deep to the tumor or not. I've come around the front. I think I've gotten through. Get up underneath that latissimus. I think I've gotten through the. Uh, maybe that's it right there still. And there's certainly vet schools, for example, that you are not allowed to use the second tier antibiotics like anaphloxacin and things like that without going to a review panel, um, which is, I think, really good. And it's not just animals that are at risk, it's humans that are at risk from antibiotic resistance that's being developed in part by practices by veterinarians, particularly in food animal and stuff like that. Might be getting a little light here. Thank you. I'll 
I'll just take a break for a second. Let's see if there are any questions. Um, so there's a question. Do you recommend that a mass, even if it looks like a lipoma and is between muscle bellies, take this off too? So that's a really good question. Um, generally, we recommend removing lipomas if either they double in size in 30 days or they are impeding function. Um, and if you have one that's between muscle bellies, I would not remove those muscle bellies if it can be peeled out. And a typical example of that would be an intermuscular lipoma of the back leg, which occurs between semimembranosis and semitendinosis, or uh, sometimes between semitendinosis and biceps femoris. And those, you definitely do not need to take those muscle bellies out. But you want to be really careful when you're removing them because the sciatic nerve often sits right in the middle of the mass. So I hope everybody's listening about my and taking to heart what I'm saying about antibiotic use. We really need to significantly decrease, particularly since you know, prophylactic antibiotics in uh, patients that don't have implants don't reduce the incidence of infection anyway. So it's not like you're, you're giving anything up by not using them. So this muscle twitching that we're getting is not that the dog can feel it. It's just directly stimulating the pectoral muscle. So we're right down to chest wall now. So that's peeling out now. So you can see this whole belly of the pectoral muscle that we're removing. off some of the skin down here. Can you see? Okay. Oops. I used to work with a surgeon who used to get really mad if you said oops during surgery. <laughs> and so we would say instead either it's worse than I thought <laughs> or they're perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not answering questions. Um, uh, this, there's a question about what type of tumor it is, and it's a lipoma, but it's infiltrated in the pectoral muscle. Here, I think this is, is it superficial pec? Or it's just a band of the deep pec that I've taken off. So you can see the latissimus dorsi really clearly there now, I think. I can see it really clearly. But your camera view in Junior's head may be impeding. <laughs> 
<laughs> What's that? Maybe trying to stay out of it. Yeah. to be really careful not to cut into the tumor because if we cut into the tumor at all the, all of this that we're doing could be for nothing just pull let's pull this down like this and This is the cut surface now of the litis, or the uh, pectoral muscle. So that's pectoral muscle right there, cut surface. That's where it inserted or originated up there in the axilla. You can feel the brachial plexus up in here. Litismus dorsi is there. That's the, probably the long head of the triceps right there. So um, I feel like that's a really good resection. You can have a look at it here. So it's all completely enclosed within that muscle belly. It's a really nice resection. I'm very happy with that. Um, can we get some mepivacaine, please? Yep. So when I get to the point that I'm going to hand this off to Junior and he's going to close this for me. I'll come back and have a look at all the questions, just make sure that I've answered everything. It's got a nice big axillary fold in here. We'll just have to, when we get all the clamps out and stuff and all the retractors, we'll have to see where the skin wants to lay down and decide how we're going to close it. Just waiting for our mepivacaine. Can we please get some 2 PDS? Thank you. Uh, so we'll play with some towel clamps initially and see where it wants to sit closed. That obviously is going there. How much skin did I remove? Not that much, so it shouldn't be under any tension, really. There we go. Right. I don't think that there's really any um, muscle belly to close together. I can do superficial pectoral to 
the chism is dorsi. And mainly I'm doing that just to reduce tension on the skin. more Thank you. I think that's going to be the way to do it. Just hold on to that for me for a second. Sight hounds, so this is an Afghan hound. Sight hounds are often more challenging because their skin's so thin. So it's just going to be really important that we restrict this dog's activity for a couple of weeks after surgery. So I'm trying to get a sub Q layer before we do our intradermal. We're basically just trying to get a two layer closure here. So that'll close nicely there. This may have to close together like this, and that'll close nicely there. Yeah, but he finish that up for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just come over and check. So Junior's going to trade sides with me. I'll come over and check to make sure that there aren't any questions that I haven't answered. All right, going all the way back to the beginning. Long time no see from JL. Hola, saludos desde Uruguay. Hi, Southpaw's team from Mexico. Long time no see. Hello from Oklahoma, Japan, Canada, San Diego, Taiwan, Romania, India, Miami, Colombia, India, Bulgaria, Mexico, Chile. Already answered that question. UK. How do you use a steel table as a neutral plate for electrosurgery? surgery? We need to trim the hair from the patient, also use saline as water. So good question. Um, uh, so you can use a steel table, and if you've got the adhesive ground plates, you can actually stick it to the table base, and then what you do is you wet the towel underneath the patient, and you always want to use saline, because saline is a much better conductor than regular water. Uh, you do not need to shave the patient um, for the ground plate. Um, alternatively, if you've got just a regular ground plate that's like 15 centimeters by 20 centimeters or whatever, then you can put that up against the fur. Often you'll put a towel around it and then just soak that with saline to get uh, good conduction. So I would not place a drain. Um, and, uh, and I, I, that's the other thing, in addition to antibiotic therapy, the other thing we need to really question is how often we're putting drains in. Um, basically, unless I've got a really, really big cavity or I've got you know, serum that's just oozing out everywhere, I'm not gonna put a drain in. Um, you know, in worst case scenario, if we got a little seroma, big deal, it's gonna resolve on its own. So um, I, I would really reduce the, amount of, the number of drains that we put in. And if we are going to put in drains, we should be using closed suction drains like Jackson Pratt's rather than um, Penrose drains. 
Hello from Vietnam. Um, and so I, in, in pretty much every case, I try to use some kind of local anesthetic. So that's actually part of our checklist. So local anesthetic um, is much, much more effective than a systemic analgesic. Um, basically, a local anesthetic is going to totally uh, block those pain pathways from ever being transmitted to the spinal cord. And so um, the other thing that it does is it prevents wind-up, which means that, like, sensation of pain leads to more pain. And so you can get into a situation where you need more and more analgesia because you allow the pain to be sensed in the first place. Whereas if we do local anesthesia, you can um, you know, significantly reduce the amount of systemic analgesia that you need. Um, now that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and end the live stream. Well, again, we're not working tomorrow because it's a public holiday. But on Wednesday, I'll be back, and I've got a full day of surgery scheduled, so I'll try to live stream something there. It's really great to be back to see everybody's, um, I guess I can't see everybody's faces, but I can see where everybody's names and where they're watching from and stuff. And it's really fun to see that and really, um, yeah, it gets me up in the morning. So anyway, um, I will see you hopefully again on Wednesday, and if not on Wednesday, then next week. Thanks again for watching. If you haven't already done, done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone.